Royal Cinemas was a movie chain in the United States that at its peak had 1,500 different screens all across this country. The story begins in 1922 when a man named Philip Smith purchases the National Theater in Boston. This theater had once been a profitable crown jewel but had fallen on hard times. He restores it to profitability by reducing their prices from 25 cents to 10 cents a ticket. He creates a company called Philip Smith Theatrical Enterprises. He expands to 25 theaters at one point, but then the Great Depression hits and he has to sell all but three to save his family. In 1935, Philip takes notice of the car culture in the United States and decides to invest in drive-in theaters. He seeks to make the drive-in extra family-friendly by letting children in for free and having playgrounds set up for them to pass the time. Also, you can enjoy popcorn and a drink special for only $2.50. Don't miss out on the summertime fun with General Cinema. Here's a picture of Philip Smith from 1947. That's him in the center with the scissors cutting the ribbon as they open the theater in Shopper's World. This was the first time ever that a theater was opened inside of a shopping mall. Once upon a time. This was Shopper's World, but a lot has changed since 1951. That's his son on the left, and in 1961, he succeeds Philip as the president of the company, and then in 1964, he changes the name to General Cinemas. <laughs> Now, Philip had always believed in diversifying his business. Over the years, he purchased bowling alleys and restaurants to protect himself if people stopped going to the cinemas. His son did the same, diversifying the General Cinemas Corporation. While he was CEO, General Cinemas purchased 60% controlling interest of Neiman Marcus. They held on to this until 1999. This era was the height of Neiman Marcus's Christmas book. One does not merely read the Neiman Marcus Christmas catalog. One is supposed to wallow in this it. This was a catalog that would show all the items you could buy, but they also included some fantasy items, items that were ridiculously extravagant and expensive and were not sold in the store. In fact, they didn't actually intend on people buying them. This practice came about in 1952 when Mr. Marcus was on a radio show with Edward R. Murrow and Murrow asked him, do you have anything unusual in the catalog? And without missing a beat, he ad-libbed, yes, you can buy a live black Angus cow and a sterling silver barbecue cart in our catalog. And so the marketing team found a cow, made a sterling silver barbecue cart and put it in the catalog. The products got crazier and crazier. You could buy a Boeing private jet. You could buy a submarine. You could buy an actual mummy. And this recipe machine from 1969 that cost $10,600. In 1991, General Cinemas purchases Harcourt Brace Jovanovic. They purchased the publishing giant for $1.5 billion. Then in 1994, they renamed the company to Harcourt General. Now, Harcourt was the original publisher of All the King's Men, many of the books by Virginia Woolf, books by T.S. Eliot, and the original publisher of Mary Poppins. <laughs> Tonight on a CBS special movie presentation, a three-hour holiday treat, Walt Disney's Mary Poppins. At this time, General Cinemas also owned a TV station in Miami and radio stations in Atlanta, Houston, and Philadelphia. For a time, General Cinemas was Pepsi's number one bottler. It's refreshment time, folks. Taste that beats the others cold. Pepsi pours it on. General Cinemas was the first theater chain to offer cup holders in the armrests. You can see the Diet Pepsi logo, and that's because the Pepsi company actually paid to have these installed in all of the General Cinema theaters. The theater chain teamed up with Lou Grade. Now, let me tell you about this guy. In 1926, he was a dancer, and he was named the Charleston Champ of the entire world. You might recognize this logo. This was Lou Grade's company, and he distributed The Muppet Show as well as Thunderbirds, the marionette TV show. Coming in to make vertical landing, Father. Welcome home, son. 
Sorry not to have a big reception party to meet you after your leave. So Lou Grade and General Cinema teamed up to form Associated General Films. This deal only lasted for a year, but during that time they produced several films, including Capricorn One, where the government pretends to send O.J. Simpson to Mars. That can't possibly be the plot of that movie. The whole world thinks they're dead, and the only way the truth can come out is if they live long enough to tell it. In 1983, General Cinemas added an additional eight screens to the Harmar Theater. This gave this St. Paul, Minnesota theater 11 screens, making it the largest movie theater complex in the world. This is the Harmar Brass performing on opening night. They also had a barbershop quartet. The theater boasted a 37 by 13 foot kind of concession stand island that people could come up to on all four sides. And this doubled as the box office. Now with Ticketmaster, you may purchase advanced tickets for the new movies coming to General Cinema Theaters. In 1986, General Cinema collaborated with Industrial Light and Magic to create the first of several policy trailers. These policy trailers would go over the rules of the theater and tell you to buy some concessions. All right, you guys, the waste receptacle's in position. Are you ready? In 1992, the company asked ILM to create some mascots. These guys are referenced in the movie Sergeant Bilko. If any of this is frightening, just hold on to me. They're dancing, Raisinette. And you don't find that frightening? They created two more mascots, Popcorn Bob and Pepsi Sue. There was a popcorn bob walk around. You know what the movies they show that little ad for the concession stand? Where the cartoon candy's dancing and the milk dud's playing the banjo? Oh, he's wailing on that banjo. Yeah. I just don't understand the raisinette. The box of raisinettes runs up to the concession stand, buys another box of raisinettes. Box of raisinettes eating another box of raisinettes? It's perverse. He's buying them for his Pepsi girlfriend. They're not having children. They're musicians. General Cinema pioneered stadium seating. They also introduced love seats into their theaters and theater seats that would rock. Here's an ad from a theater opening in 1998. At that opening, you could see Titanic or the Barney movie or meet the Deedles. Phil and Stu Deedle. Bold. Daring. Rad. Exactly. These guys didn't invent cool. They're just taking it to the extreme. You might not remember this Paul Walker movie, but what I remember about it was a news story about a woman named Diane Shore. She was a two-time Grammy winner, and she said that her company had been using the term Deedle Music for many years. Diane Shore sued the Walt Disney Company over this film. She was concerned that Meet the Deedles would become so successful that from that point on, everyone would only associate the word Deedle with madcap teenage lunacy. This is the greatest grand opening ever. Live in person, Scooby-Doo, the Cabbage Patch Kids, and Yogi Bear. And you had a chance to win a Star Trek pinball machine? In the year 2000, General Cinema filed for bankruptcy, and in 2001, AMC decided to purchase them. You may remember that Averman from the Mighty Ducks worked at General Cinemas in the opening of D2. It was the General Cinemas at the Mall of America in Minnesota. Averman, let's go! In 1968, the company started a straw poll to coincide with the United States presidential election. People would go up and pick the straw of the candidate that they preferred. Then they would tabulate how many straws had been taken nationwide and declare a winner. And the person that won the straw poll at General Cinemas always won the presidency. This is one of the CDs that would be played in the lobby featuring lots of different motion picture theme songs. Another thing that was unique about this chain was that they had a Taco Bell Express in their theater. 
I remember this. You could go up and get two tacos and then go into a movie theater that smelled like tacos. And look at this. Herbie the Love Bug arriving with a smaller Herbie on top of him that kids could sit in. That's general cinema. Herbie the Love Bug pops up for me all the time. My most popular video on this channel is a video all about Herbie the Love Bug. There is a Herbie the Love Bug at the bottom of the ocean. Screen used. And I tell that story and a bunch of others in that video. You can watch it here. Otherwise, YouTube says this is what is best for you. And I'll see you next time.